welcome everyone to the program today. Um, uh, this month's program is being presented by Dr. Jack Ammons. And um, he was a superintendent. He also helped school districts for over, for a long time. And um, I also want to thank uh, this month's sponsor, uh, who's Lou King. And many of you probably know her as well. She's getting ready to move, so we're all going to miss her. And so now I'll turn it over to Jeff. Okay. If, if you, you will. And if you could kind of stand up here so okay. I can pick up on the. Okay. Can I point to the one oh, and yeah. bring them up? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's get this one right here. It's number two. This this is unbelievable. I don't think you can read this, and so I'll try to read it to you. This was when Greenville actually was in the cotton business, doing quite well, and they decided that. Uh, with the help of Dallas, that they might be able to in expand even more. Consequently, what they did was the people at Greenville spent the money to put in what we would call a compress. And I guess that's what they call it uh, for years, still call it compress. That compress still holds the record for the amount of hay, uh, hay, of cotton that was pressed in a 24 hour. Can you believe that? Now, the date is in here, 1912, September 30th, 1912. Now, I hope we can get the, there were about eight or 10 black men that totally took the responsibility of it and set the record. And as, I'm say, as I say, they still hold the record today for how much they pressed back then. Now, I'm going to deviate from that because I told you we were going to be desultory not knowing how much time went. Yes, ma'am. No, I was going to say, aren't you supposed to be up there recording? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Recording. <laughs> oh, are we supposed to be recording? Yes. Well, it is. It well, is. He didn't tell me about that. She kind of slipped that one out. It'll be a good one. You reckon it will? It'll be good. Huh? <laughs> anyway, the record still holds for that cotton. Now, the strange thing about it is the cotton wasn't used locally. If you if you knew much about, and we're 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 old. A lot of people in this room are old enough to remember when they when it was ginning and how many gins there were, and now I think there's one in the county. That's it. I don't think it's running. It's not running? <laughs> no, it, uh... Mark Minitoes. That's it, what happens when a school... Minitoes is. It's and still and going. That's the only one that's still going. That one, and then the one up in... The newest one up in... I always get confused. Yeah, ben Miller. Wheeler, Ben Franklin. Yeah. Old Pilgrim. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, mm -hmm. there's that one, which Try I still need to Try not let me forget to get into that. That's unbelievable. We visited Bo Pilgrim's. He's gone from chickens to cotton. That starts with a C. <laughs> Ma'am? It starts with a C. Well, it does. Okay. <laughs> is it a K or shit? Yeah. Is it a K? <laughs> what we want to do, I want to go a little bit further on the cotton, then we're going to get off on what happened after the cotton pretty well left us here. And it wasn't good. Not for green. But the cotton that we grew locally here was hauled to Jefferson, Texas. Now this this is unbelievable. I, I still I've been to Jefferson. You all right? Yeah, that was odd. Okay. That picture's okay. I think it's fine. Yeah. See if that picture's okay. And it's hanging on that. Wall. That's fine. We had. Uh, oh, I see it. Yeah. Is the picture okay as she says? Yes. Yeah, if it's not, we're still going to go ahead. <laughs> all right. The cotton that was grown locally was, was, they didn't call it being baled at that time. They pressed it, I guess that's what they meant when they said pressed it. But it was put in, they did, did put in what we call a form of a bale. Just called it press. Now then, what happened with that, with that uh, cotton mm -hmm. is that they ended up 
making some contracts in Jefferson, Texas. Jefferson is a beautiful little town. It has one thing that's kind of surprising, and that is there is a creek, if you want to call it a creek, it's not a river, it comes right through town in Jefferson. They actually can you take paddle boats, like you see in the Mississippi River. They take paddle boats, and they take the cotton off of the wagons from Greenville, Texas, which takes three days for to haul the, the cotton to Jefferson. Three days by wagon and mules. This was before trucks. But they were starting to make money. So in Jefferson, they have what is called a turning basin, which you have to have at a, at a decent size uh, wharf. And I've seen it. I didn't believe it when I was told about it, but we've seen it. We spent a couple of days there and uh, got on the, the uh, body of water, which basically went to the Red River. Now think about that. Three days to get the cotton to Jefferson. Then they'd have to change it over to paddle wheeler boats and move it to the Red River. Now all of that's on here, and I'm sorry that you can't read that because they can do a much better job than I can. But I was fascinated by the fact that Jefferson had, had anything to do with cotton. It's not cotton country. It's not even farming country, good farming country. But they had that water. And they were, for, for I don't know how many years before the cotton, they were hauling freight to the Red River and using the Red, the Red River to get whatever the freight was. Originally, uh, I guess originally it would stop maybe once, but originally it went to Galveston, Texas, and that's where the cotton went. The cotton was placed on paddle wheelers. It went to the Red River. The Red River then went down to, what is our lake, uh, uh, this man-made lake? Samway. I'm sorry. Uh, Salida. No. Salida Bend, is that? No, no, but anyway, that's uh, not that important. Anyway, they've got it to now to Galveston. And from Galveston, they ship it overseas. It's Caddo Lake. Yeah. Caddo Lake. They actually had water to Caddo Lake. And Caddo Lake, sometimes they were able to go on to Galveston, but from what I understand, they had to ship it again by wagon to Galveston, Texas. And from Galveston, it went to all over Europe and Africa. Okay. This is this was really important. Let's let's uh, go on to the next one and see if it shows the people. There's your cotton here in Greenville. I'm I'm old enough to actually remember seeing it like that on the square. Mm -hmm. And some of y'all are too. Huh? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on. This, this is very important. I, can you read that? Can, can you read it? Yeah, make it bigger because I, I, you're not going to believe some of this. My family had a grocery store downtown. It's where the police station is now. The new police station and jail is now. Just before you get to the railroad tracks, MKNT. Yeah. That'll work. I want you to look at what Greenville had, and it was not it was not financed or developed for anything other than to get the cotton money to build Greenville. And having cotton money to build Greenville was the main thing that they did with this. Come on in, sir. Go ahead. Can you read that? Can you see that? This is what was downtown in Greenville, Texas. 
Now, one thing uh, I was going to tell uh, Don a while ago, I think. Don, the, I was talking about Grady Chevrolet. This is kind of, this is kind of interesting, too, to show you how Greenville failed to really move out of downtown. The, uh, Lee Street was a security blanket for businesses, and they were all on Lee Street, more or less. The east end of Lee Street was industrial. The west end, think about it, the west end was where they had even, and where they even had uh, hospitals, uh, they had apartment complexes, not like we know today, but it was where you could start, a, a, it also that's where the YMCA started in Greenville. Up, up at the west end of Lee Street, which was kind of interesting, uh, since we tried but failed to uh, get a new YMCA. You had the tracks, the MKT tracks coming into Greenville. And I know you all don't remember that. I remember as a small kid seeing the Texas Special, which was, if I remember correctly, the, the, the sides of it were stainless steel. It was a beautiful, beautiful train that came through. And people used to be on just to watch it because most of the trains uh, are like what you would envision they would be. All right. This is downtown Greenville, Texas. There's one thing I want to go ahead and, and share with you right now because you'll think about it. And you're not going to believe it. But Greenville was such a center for trade that people came from down in East Texas. They came from, they didn't come from Dallas because Dallas had about the same thing Greenville had. They went all the way to Paris, the people, the people, and between Paris and Sulphur Springs or Greenville, there are lots of people that uh, were farming. And so Greenville not only had very nice uh, clothing stores, uh, I don't know, I can't remember. Jane Ann didn't live here, so she wouldn't remember. But I was showing this to a group somewhere in, uh, in Greenville here last year, and they could name two ladies' uh, stores. Tannebaum's. Tannebaum. All right. Skyballs. Yeah, that's three. <laughs> so, go ahead. You're next. And, you and there was two. On the oh yeah, Sam Schwartz. Sam mm -hmm. Schwartz. Okay, all of that was on <laughs> Lee Street around the uh, the downtown area, which is, at that time, as far as trade uh, existed, uh, the trade was there around the courthouse. Didn't go any further east, other than small trade. But we're talking big things. Now, we had two really nice hotels, and I'm sure they're on there. I'm taking too much time for this, I know, but it's just unbelievable what Greenville went through, how they built Greenville from cotton, and then lost pretty well everything when the cotton went to uh, other areas of the state. Love of Texas, the valley, took the cotton. Love took it because they had water, and that's hard to believe in West Texas, but they had plenty of water out in West Texas, and of course they had plenty of water down on the border, and consequently uh, we started losing our cotton. Now, today, what I mentioned a while ago, today we're growing cotton, and, and I saw it, uh, which, which really impressed me. And Don, would, somebody mentioned over there about uh, Pilgrim. Mm -hmm. Have you actually seen that? No, I had an appointment to go and I didn't go. Yeah. Well, you I have to make an appointment to get in. Where is it? Cooper. Right north of Cooper, between Cooper. You know where Highway 19 comes in? Okay, it's right there. It's all automated. Mm, okay. How, how, how you can get cotton to be automated is hard to believe, 
Bo Pilgrim's son did just that. We went through the whole plant. Now, he works not only around Cooper, where they have some pretty good cotton up there, but also he has uh, autom automation in the form of uh, trucks that will go to the valley or even Lubbock and bale the cotton farm. So that's just another way that uh, they were making money today off, off the cotton. Okay, I, I'm fascinated by all that was on basically Lee Street in the green. No, no town around here could compare with Greenville. They came to Greenville and shot. And, and I mentioned from Paris to the Red River, even Oklahoma, down through there, Sulphur Springs, uh, East Texas. They came here because, like you say, there were some pretty nice uh, uh, stores here. Uh, MKT Railroad. And, and that's the one that I mentioned. It's on the west side of Lee Street. All of the car dealerships were either either on Lee Street, if you believe that, or right off of Lee Street, north of Johnson Street, which was way before any of us. But they actually had some uh, uh, regular regular dealerships north Greenville, which moved to Lee Street. Now, the, the ironic part about that, there were no dealerships, and, they, and these dealerships made, were making money, but there were no places in Greenville for the dealerships except up and down Lee Street until Walter Grady came to Green. And I was graduating from high school. Consequently, uh, it hadn't been that long ago. Walter Grady came in, and I, I, I didn't interview him, so I, I'm speaking for him. Uh, I was going to go to work for him, but he wanted me all day, and I wanted to go to school half a day at ET. So that didn't work out. But if you stop and think about it, we had the creek. James, what do we call that creek? Long Branch. Long Branch. And if you stop and think about it, that was kind of a border. That, that part of town. Back in those days, there was nothing out on that hill except some cotton. Walter bought the land from the Long Branch, and, and I may be off on this a little bit, he bought the land either from the Long Branch back or around that area. You know where his dealership was after he built a dealership. But he was the one who moved out of downtown Greenville as far as dealerships, and then here came dealerships. They all started moving out either on the highway or uh, in areas that uh, were big enough for the lots and all that. And Walter actually sold off part of his land in order to build the, the, the size uh, dealership that he built, which was a modern new dealership. And it moved from uh, Woodard's Anybody remember where Woodard's Chevrolet dealership was? What was over there by it? Do you remember? The Dodge House is there by the K, uh, M M K T right? K T Railroad. And the Bodecker Ice Cream. Cream. Yeah, Bodecker Ice Cream. <laughs> in the southwest corner of that. Yeah. And when the dealership closed, it was Woodard's out where you're talking about. And we were without a dealership, Chevrolet dealership, for many years. Used to go to Wolf City to buy Chevrolet and and range cubes for the cows. You could do both for you. All right, Chevrolet Dodge. I listed all of them. There's Grady Chevrolet. Four. Now you notice I used the term picture shows. They're still called picture shows 
somewhere around in here and further east, there were picture shows. Now, have you listed them all in your mind there? Yes. <laughs> I'm talking too much. Go ahead. No, you're not talking too much. Rialto, Colonial, Texas. And Rita. And Rita, and the other five. Rita, and the other five. Uh, Colonial. Colonial, Rita. Okay, let's not skip one now. <laughs> Rita, Rialto, okay. Colonial, and Texas. Okay. It was the Lyric here. Lyric. Are we talking about the 30s or are we talking about? 40s. Uh, late 30s. Lyric was 40s. in the 30s. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, along with those theaters, we had about the middle of, of, of uh, uh, Lee Street, two nice, really nice hotels. And that's all, that's all we list. I, I, I know it's on there somewhere because this was researched. I didn't do this. But besides the, the, uh, the, the two nice theaters, I'm trying to figure out how to say this for someone else. There was another hotel. And uh, it was over the bus station. Anybody remember where the bus station was? Mm -hmm. Okay. It was upstairs over the bus station. Our grocery store was two doors down from the, the uh, Greenville Hotel. Now, downstairs at, at that uh, hotel, the buses came in, big counter uh, for meals, cafe, all, had it all because back then, that was about the only form of transportation people could afford. Mm -hmm. There was, upstairs was the hotel. Downstairs was kind of a, an area where you could relax and wait for your bus. Or, if you wanted to go upstairs, there were uh, uh, some ladies of ill repute had taken over part of the uh, Greenville Hotel upstairs. It was pretty popular, and it was two doors down from our grocery store. <laughs> and they bought a lot of groceries, and the cafe bought the grocery furniture too. And I delivered them. And my mother made it very clear to me, <laughs> you've got 15 minutes to get that food, staples, whatever they want, and you better be back. Now, and I, I, I was always back, but mother would take one day off every once in a while. And I would go back down there, not, not to meet the ladies necessarily, but there were slot machines downstairs at the Greenville Hotel. There were pool tables at the Greenville Hotel. And that was about the, the best that you, you could find to entertain yourself and uh, not get in trouble with mother. <laughs> Five and dining stores, we had three of them. Two major suited shoe stores. Now, we're talking top-notch shoe stores. And I, I remember being taken in there and, and uh, parents buying my shoes. They weren't part of Perkins or Greenville Dry Good. They were sure, sure enough and so two major shoe stores, three general stores, that's Bag Bagcross, uh, Western Auto and Dodds. Lord, have you ever seen a place that always could serve you like Dodds could hardware. <laughs> it didn't make any difference what you wanted, they had it. Paul Dodd, wasn't that his name? Six jewelry stores. I don't know uh, where, where they used that much jewelry unless it was down at the Greenville Hotel. <laughs> Two major stores, three general stores, Babcock's, Western Auto, Dodds. 
and so on. but I was aware of it, bootleggers were, were not only very successful, most of the bootleggers back in those days were popular. Not nice, nice guys contributed to, contributed to the, uh, the town, uh, but it was still illegal and they just uh, seemed to always know when they were going to be ready. All right, let's get another one. Central Airlines. Quite a story there. 20 minutes to Dallas by Central Airlines. <laughs> and we've got a, a man back here that's had a lot of experience with the airplanes. And that's a fine looking young man up there in the picture there. That, uh, we, we were one of the first groups that, uh, the scouts, that got to ride in the DC-3. And it took 20 minutes to get to the camp where they were going to unload us for two days. Oh, and, and to give you an example of Greenville and how it supported, and, and I'm going to editorialize too, the, the streets in Greenville, at least four of them are, major, are named after major contributors to Greenville. How do I know that? I worked my way through college for three of those people. They saw to it that I had a job as long as I was in college. Jack Finney, uh, and, and I, I can't name, we can name them, help me James. The, the three or four. Roy Warren. Joe Roy Ramsey. Warren. Joe Ramsey. Joe Ramsey. One more. One more major. Leo. Leo Hackney. No, I don't think Leo Hackney. Before Leo. Yeah, I think that was before Leo, but he was one of those that contributed big Louis time Louis to Green. But these, oh. these people, these people helped rebuild Greenville after we lost but what we consider uh, a lot of research and a lot of uh, money and by that time the government was coming in to help us with the farming but we had pretty well depleted the minerals in that black land soil or at least that's what they told us uh, okay let's, let's get out of the next slide entertainment how many towns around Greenville do you think have a King Opera House? <laughs> this is another example of Greenville and what the cotton did for the country. Major Opera House, Major Stadium. Any, any of you ever go? You, you, you and I went. They played the. Uh, <laughs> They played the Yankees, didn't they? They did. They, yeah, they did. They, did. they weren't in their league. They just were coming through town uh, promoting. <laughs> stage shows at Texan and Rialto. Uh, big time stage shows at the Texan on Saturday. I'm trying to think of the, the lady's name. It was all with Pearls of Pauline. And I'm looking at y'all, and I know I'm probably embarrassing you. No, I don't remember that. You don't remember that? Well, that was one of your day, right? Stage shows. The fairgrounds, there is still controversial to this day about where the original fire, uh, fairgrounds were in Greenville. I went to at least three different places where they told me they were the fairgrounds, uh, and it didn't make any difference to me. Uh, it, there was, there were legal things that went on in the fairgrounds when the was a was a local racetrack, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of uh, racing went on yeah. uh, with horses. Some of the same people. Mm -hmm. 
Another fairground was out where um, this, um, West Lee, long about the Carver. That, that was a major fairground on time. Roller rinks, they came every year. It was the same one, it was wooden. They put it all together. You know what I'm talking about, I'm, I'm sure. And the, the, the ironic part about it was there, there were some people that lived where the, where the roller rinks came. And they were a tough family, rough family. Uh, I'm not going to call their name. I, I have before, but I'm not going to call their name. Uh, but they had two boys and, and a girl, a daughter. And they were tough. And there was a real good fishing pool on their property. The reason I'm telling you all of this is that became Travis Elementary School. <laughs> And more than once, uh, we wish we hadn't gone over there when both boys were there. <laughs> Roller rink, Bonnie and Clyde's car. Every year, Bonnie and Clyde's car came by. I, I don't know that it was the same car every year, but, but they, they came by. And usually, get ready for the man that was buried. Uh, usually, they would would just park in a parking meter. They they didn't they they didn't go to the fairgrounds or anywhere. They they just would drive up and park that car and it'd be there for maybe a week. And it was Bonnie and Clyde's car, supposed to. Okay, Howard Winans was going to be here today. I, I, I don't know if you know or not, but his son had a really, really bad wreck. Really bad. And uh, at the last minute, he, he didn't get to come, and I'd ask him to come because he was the only one that saved me when I made this presentation uh, for the Rotary Club. It was the only, he was the only one that stood behind me when I told him about the gentleman that was buried on the courthouse square. I remember that. You remember that yes, too? Right. Good for you. you. You get in free now. <laughs> I guess I'm old. <laughs> well, it was a big deal. Yep. About two weeks. How much did it cost? Howard could tell me how much it cost. Quarter? Yeah. Quarter. Okay. Cost a quarter mm -hmm. to see the man who had been buried on the, uh, on the grounds of the courthouse. <laughs> And, uh, and you, you could see, they had a light down there, and they had a glass cover down there. And so, he was real. I mean, he'd wave at you and everything. <laughs> so, we had entertainment. Don't ever think we didn't have it. Some of it might have been a little bit illegal. Some of it was uh, just for fun. Okay, is there any, are there any more below that? This is unbelievable. At one time, this was the best and only natatorium within a, an area of about 200 miles. Greenville did it. Cotton did it. This side had a lot of trees, and it was a picnic area. How many of you remember that? I know you do because you're nodding your head there. <laughs> My kids were there. <laughs> yeah, okay. What but they it? had picnics there. There were stands over there. And you could go and, and have your birthday party there or whatever you want to do. But it was nice. And it was Spanish architecture, wasn't it? Anybody remember that? You don't remember that? I think I'm pretty sure it was. Okay. We got the man that was buried alive. That's very really important. Anything else on that? <laughs> this gets controversial too, uh, and and uh, I'm going to share with you without calling the names over there. <laughs> okay, these were 
some of the events that Greenville was known for. Number one, they had a new mayor, and it was a lady, and and uh, then they had the the. Uh, all, how many would they, would they have had, James? How many would have been on the board back then? You don't know. However many they had on the board, had uh, on the board, and and I don't know. They were they were counseling, it, but I'm not sure if it was the same amount as far as the ones that you have today. The. Uh, the interesting part about this is <clears throat> Gary Whitlock was on this. Uh, he was a, a, a board member, and he and some of the rest of them just couldn't stand some of the things that were going on with the city council. <laughs> and they resigned. All of them. Every board member resigned. Now, if you knew Gary Whitlock, uh, and he's gone. He was one of my best friends, but he's gone. But Gary was quite capable of experiencing some of those things himself. Uh, and he, he got off with the rest of them, and they quit. Now then, Channel 8 covered this. and did a real good job covering it. Uh, there was still some snow on the screen, even this late. <laughs> And it's not this 19, it's not this 1895, it's 1969 down there when they resigned. Now, the interesting part about this is that they resigned because they didn't agree with some of the things that were going on uh, from elected officials. That's all that needs to be said for that. <laughs> Greenville, uh, the uh, Dallas Channel 8 came and covered it. And once again, here's an example of Greenville. I named some of the people a while ago that were really, really good, supportive people of Greenville. This, uh, this time, we had 50, I'm, I'm on the last paragraph on the page here, 50 citizens were selected for, to form a new council committee and mayor. I don't know that this had ever been done before. You two back there have been the board members are going that way. Uh, you, you don't have any cards to pass out. Okay, we'll move on then. Fifty citizens were picked. Tempco had just come in here. There was some leadership at Tempco. Tempco came in in 1959. Was there for it. Okay, Tempco. Right. You know who announced it first of all? Probably you. <laughs> it was in my dad's grocery store, sure enough. You uh, said 69. The reason I was correcting you. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, I was trying to see the names of the people, but we'll, we'll find them in a minute. Anyway, he came in the store, I can't think of his name right now, and announced it, that it was coming to rain. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. What happened was some of the city council people, it may, it may have been some of those we mentioned that were good, solid citizens, said, well, we've got to do something. Let's form a committee and let's form a group to be selected as possible uh, candidates, candidates for the city council. I want to say, and I'm not going to call his name because I'm not, uh, Ed, uh, Wait. no, 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 uh, the, the Ed that uh, was head of Tempco when it first came here. Ooh, I'll find it. I've got it listed over there. Anyway, they, they supported this effort, and so 50 citizens from Greenville were picked. Yeah. Beer. 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 Yes. Fred. Fred. Fred Beer. Yes. Uh, and don't let me forget to tell another story on him. It's about horses. 
another event. It may be on here, I'm not sure. Anyway, the dog leash law is on there, that's pretty important. Evidently, they're not upholding that one around where we live. Okay, these people, these 50 people were submitted for possible board members. And we had an election. And they picked eight or 10 board members. I, I don't remember how many that would have been to replace them. I was one of those who was selected in the 50. I was 26 years old. I had uh, just become a principal at Travis School. And one of the board members came to me and said, regardless, he probably said irregardless, but anyway, <laughs> he said, regardless of what you think you could do, this is your first year to be a principal and we don't want you selected to be a board member. So I probably wouldn't have been selected anyway at 26 years of age. But this board member made it very clear that he was a board member and for me not to run. You just be principal of Travis School. Okay. What else? What, what was another thing we were going to talk about? Oh, Greenville finally got some... Go ahead. Um, I, was, I was just looking at your picture there. Mm. Picture. picture? My mother was one of those princesses. <laughs> and all of that centennial. And uh, uh, I have to tell you, I'm very proud of that. All right. Now you, you broke my train of thought. You've got to tell us about horse racing. All right, that's it. All right. <laughs> Greenville got involved with somebody out of town. Dallas was probably, as they are now, probably sitting over in Dallas saying, now, what can we get out of Greenville now? It's growing, you know. Let's build some houses over there. Three or four hundred. Uh, don't get me started on that. In comes a company from Sweden, I think. Scandinavian. I'm not sure of that. And they realized that there were just horses everywhere in Texas. So they built, they, they got the, uh, the necessary paperwork done and they actually picked the land and what do you call it when you get uh, real estate and you just, uh, uh, until you actually purchase it, you can get a contract. contract on it. And so he got a contract to build a, a slaughterhouse. You ready for this? Oh. Horses. Hey, they're big prime meat overseas. So we were going to start killing horses. We, I, you know, slaughtering sounds better, but this is dramatic. So, so we're, we're going to start killing horses. <laughs> and Ed, to show, to show you what kind of a, a citizen he was, and, and, and he was running the bomber plant. But he got involved, he got involved big time in Greenville. And we had our meeting with the, in the, uh, at the uh, downtown. I'm, I'm just blank. Uh, anyway, we had the meeting in one of the big buildings downtown that was big enough for about 200 people that were not going to uh, let that uh, uh, horse slaughterhouse meat company, whatever you want to call it, they were not going to let them do that. And, and he was chosen to be the chairman of this group. And I'll never forget it, I was chosen again to save the horses. Of course, I had them out at the farm, but, but, but we didn't eat them. So anyway, he had uh, a group of, of people. He was on the stage, and he called for motions and uh, all the proper procedure. And their attorneys said, well, that they've gone too far. And so he was told possibly they'd gone too far and it couldn't be stopped. And he said, well, now this was 
This was Ed, uh, Fred Buehring, Fred Buehring uh, who was very quiet, hardly quite a, quite a leader. I, in fact, I, I was reading about him today you know, when he got an award and when they named the street after him out at uh, the main drive. Uh, the main road into the black. Is it the main one? Okay. Yeah. All right. So anyway, he he got everybody together. They all decided that they would fight it if necessary. We, we still had a little claim. And he said, but I don't think that'll be necessary. Because the first horses I see on site out there in a corral, it's just probably going to be one of our biggest planes that are going to fly over real low and, might, and maybe cause those horses to jump the corral and be gone. <laughs> now, that, that, that's truth. I was there. Uh, and that one didn't have anything to do with Timco. But he stood up and told him, he said, you're not going to bring it in here. Because it was right there, the land was right there as part of the uh, street, which was 20, uh, was not a street then. Uh, but that was the way they got in and out. And they already had staked off, I think. But anyway, it failed. Okay. We're, are we about out of time? The main thing I wanted to, to say was that, that we're really in a different time, uh, and, and maybe even here, we really need to talk about what happened when Greenville, the cotton left us, went to West Texas, went to the border. The cotton left us, and we didn't know anything but raising cotton. This was before Temco came in. And even after Temco came in, it didn't hire everybody that needed to be hired. Greenville didn't have any industry. So, the, the, uh, what, what happened was, there's an example of it. It got ugly at Greenville. People were mad because the buildings were not being taken, uh, taken seriously. This is the uh, post office, I guess. And yeah. 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 Somebody argued with me the other day right here in, in River City. They mm -hmm. just argued and argued that that was not the, the, the post office. But it was, was our grocery store was right here. And I got the job. If I wasn't delivering groceries to the uh, Greenville Hotel, I was taking the daily mail. I post said office. it was post office to somebody, and they told me it was the library. No. no. <laughs> well, then I'll be in one. I think that's where Murphy signed up. Sir, I think that's where Audie Murphy signed up. He went downstairs. Down. Yeah, they were the chamber is today. Downstairs. That's that area. In the post okay. office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Funny you should bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, this was our Greenville, and I know we're, we're better off now than we were, there's no doubt about that. We still don't have any industry much other than uh, Temco, if you stop and think about it. There's not a lot of industry here, and several big, uh, big... Innovation big, First is a pretty good size of operation, <laughs> Innovation First. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, can you think of any in, in the business you've been in? You probably know all the What well, I think is interesting is the building you can see on the other side of the post office in the top, top picture. Oh, right here? Uh-huh. You know what, who that is? Uh -huh. The cutest girl in Greenville at that particular time. That was her mother and daddy's grocery store. What was it? Donna K. Crawford. Crawford. That was okay. Crawford Grocery. Right. You know what was upstairs? Oh, now I remember it. I've seen it. Anybody remember what was upstairs? I know James Bogley did. Was it that where Reese That's the West, where Reese worked out. There was a gym upstairs. And that was his. They, they, Crawford saw to it that Reese had that as long as he wanted it. Okay. And he worked with a bunch of us boys too. He was a great guy. Yeah, yeah, he really was. 
Okay, so that's Crawford's grocery there. Okay. Ours was right down here. Uh, right quickly, and, I, and I'll stop. But the main thing when we had this decline, do you have any idea, anybody want to guess what caused the decline more than anything else when they brought in people to try to help Greenville get back on his feet and, and they went through all these studies and all this? Do you have any idea what had to be a problem? Well, you didn't grow up in Greenville. Because the first thing, there was absolutely no parking uptown. And I was going to Texas Tech at the time, and downtown Lubbock was the neatest place I have ever been. It was clean, it had all of these, uh, these stores, uh, and, and by the way, every street in Lubbock is either alphabetized or in numerical order. Did you know that? Okay, that was Lubbock. We were, going, we were doing the same thing. I came back to go to school and I got on several committees and I started telling them, and nobody wanted to hear it, that what happened in Lubbock, they moved out to the suburbs. And they did it because, you know, it was a matter of money, a matter of just like we, where we have. But Greenville did, had absolutely no parking uptown. And yet all of our stores were still uptown. And they were slowly dying right there. We're, we're, seeing, we're seeing some sort of kind of shaky times right now, uh, according to some people, when we start talking about developing and how much we should develop and how many houses we should build. We need tax base. And I'm editorializing, but we need a tax base. Uh, and we're very limited on that. Okay, I'll stop there. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? The building that's uh, right across from the junior high uh, on the north side, um, a friend of mine told me it was actually a hospital, and he was actually born in that hospital. Well, I've got, a pic I've got pictures of all of the hospitals. And that was something Greenville had uh, from the very beginning, they had hospitals for people here. Now, the one you're talking about, uh, I'm trying to think what street that is. Say it again. What street? Describe it again. Uh, it's on the north side of the, the junior high, the junior high where she would have been the old high school. Give us a street no, name no, of the junior no, high. That's Phillips Hospital. Or something. Or, no. I don't remember a hospital there. Oh, yeah, yeah. there oh, yeah. was. He did a it's, the building's still there, but it's all boarded up now. Yeah. Yeah. It's just well, I'm here up that I'm not familiar with. Oh, yeah, Dr. Phillips. Oh, yeah. Phillips Hospital. Okay. Yes, I was born there. Oh, there. wait a minute. You're talking about Dr. Phillips. Yeah. Across the street. Mm -hmm. on, yeah. On, on the north side. Yeah. 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 I, I actually probably had my life, life, life uh, saved. Uh, at that hospital, and that was not our regular hospital, but I got uh, blood poisoning, and back then they didn't exactly know how to, to handle it, and that was Dr. Uh, Dr. Phil, I'm trying to think of the son's name, real popular kid around here. Phil Phillips. Phil Phillips. Phil was his son. Dr. Phillips had a huge ranch. The scene you got me started on more information. I'll stop right now. He, he was north. He was north going out towards Wolf City Highway. He had Webster Herford cattle, and and he had. I, I guess Phil was his only son, right? And he was one of the best doctors we ever had. Yeah, he said he was born in that hospital. Of course, he would have been born in the '60s in, the, in that, that hospital. Well, he was a local guy, so it's totally possible. He owned a lot of stuff around here, yeah. Phil, uh, I ran into Phil, uh, he's gone now, I guess. He was an attorney in Denton, Texas, uh, his whole career. So how many hospitals were there here? Oh, man. Oh, well, there yeah. were. I can Doctors. show you at least a full picture yeah. right here. Yeah. Every doctor. The Bectons, somebody help me here. The Good. Bectons, the Bectons, uh, Grandfather 
was a, a, a doctor, I think. Then the son was a, was a, a, a doctor, and that was the one we would know. That's Dr. Washington Bay. Street there. And then there, that was, uh, that's two generations. Joseph graduated with uh, the, the, us, Don, myself, and Joseph Beckton. And Joseph's sister married the guy that owns this Cadillac in here. Beverly. Huh? Beverly. Beverly, yeah. Beverly. Beverly Beckton. So, yeah, that's at least three or four. Uh, and I was born at a hospital on Wesley Street. And that was Dr. Reese. But mm -hmm. all the doctors, if you're now, a which big doctor. Now, which Street? This, uh, uh, that's the Texan Theater that makes okay. Well, mm -hmm. see, there was a big hospital of white one next door. There was one called Good, Good and something. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Good. Yeah. 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 Was, right was it Good up. and Lucky? Or Good and something? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't you know. said you guys used to go to see the uh, Ultra Majors Field and watch the baseball. Um, so it was Monty Stratton an actual citizen from here? Did he grow up here? No, no, no. But he was a citizen of here, uh, and and after his career was over, uh, and I'll tell this uh, since you brought it up, uh, he was pretty popular. His wife was a real, real hard-nosed Yankee. <laughs> She was the perfect person for us to have as the the uh, uh, mother. The what? Den, Den mother. mother. Den mother. She was tough enough to keep a bunch of boys, including me, very, very well organized and very behaving. And, and, and they and they then lived out on Bluebird. Yeah. Bluebird Lane. Yeah. Yeah. Bowery sites. And that about well, yeah. that's he, fixing to be He used to pitch batting practice. I played baseball in high school. He, he would pitch batting practice. And she worked at Skiles. Yeah, that's right. That's right. She did work with that personality. I don't know how she sold it. Well, but she was not like that. Oh, yes. Just with us boys. Yeah, that's right. He could make you look like a fun. Can't beat him, We were scared to death of him. With the movie came out, we're ready. We're ready. Yeah, yeah, see, uh, just as nice as it the movie came out, they had the um, uh, they had premiere. the premiere downtown. And Jimmy Stewart and all of them were here too. Well, no. Um, James Stewart was here. He, no, uh -huh. he didn't come. But uh, I have a picture of them. No, I uh, think June, June. June Allison. Allison. June Allison. June Allison. But I thought I thought he came for the parade. Mm, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I've got a picture of them. Well, you brought something else up, and I promise you I'll stop. Oh, yeah. I said James, I said James, uh, Jimmy Stewart. When, when we did the airplane part, the DC-3, mm -hmm. first of all, I just have to tell you, that plane went into operation in 37. In 37, the DC-3. It was the perfect plane to, to be used in Greenville. If you believe we actually had uh, the, uh, the I, I, I think Central is the only one, I've been told uh, there was another one, but Central was the only one that became a part of a big corporation. And just before they stopped this, uh, and, and, and quit coming to Greenville. The company that owned the Central Express, Central, um, yeah, Express, Central uh, uh, Airline Industry, let me get this right now. They were in the process of bringing online their first jet planes. I'm looking at this guy because he's spent most of his life in doing this type of work. Okay.